tribute. The graves of relatives pock the hillside under teetering crosses. Moss creeps up the shade tree for years. A field of heroes sprouts flags over decades of sons who won the wars and guard these legends now. Bleached headstones note the dates of mothers and daughters dying young. The places they came from, County Mayo, County Clare, barely visible in the blaring sun of another May, 1998. Farther up, my father's ground beside his parents. The song of birds I construe as a tribute to him, to all of them too, and the victories that raise no flags. Drought season. July leaves us dry amid our dead lawns, anguished without the wherewithal for tears even. Drought season, flowers plead to caring but helpless ears like starving children far away. The cemetery where the grass around my parents' headstone is brown and brittle, I visit in the heat of indecision. Here, a connection to everything and nothing a dizzying moment of culmination suddenly lapsed as a foregone choice. Sorely parched, still, I will ask. The arid voice that brings me here will bring me back again sometime, knowing I'll never leave with more. Gone like my father's thirst. Lost like my mother's care. Looking for rain. The sky stares me down. Beach dream, salt, wet flesh to sail, tethered with hair to earth down here, docked in a satin port for a short fierce storm, a boom of nerve commanded by loud, languageless words cried over crashing waves of holy brine, casting ballast to the constant ebb and flow for the sudden burst of calm, grappling hook flotsam and jetsam collected by tangled nets of clothes to anchor thoughts of the struggling catch brought to a private shore just to be thrown back for the next sweaty voyage below. Morning walk in fog. A low spirit resurrects this length of road, lifts a vague horizon under the blur of early sun. Smoke from hot coals along our barefoot path home rising like a palm reader's brow over a damp hand, a tapestry of broken lines in the sweaty parlor of dawn. Before the mist burns away, the opportunity to see ourselves comfortably in hell or voyaging thereabouts, at least until the traffic comes, doubtless in its morning waves, to part this vapor sea and bring us back moist as blades of grass to the asphalt promise of a Monday in July. Three second treat. One, a gray breeze in June dusts the pavement clean. Birds squeak in rustling trees. Somewhere between words and acts, we are poised to move from dreams. These apocalyptic green mountains stronger than the will to wait. Two, the hardest hours are the easy ones we pay with the rest of our lives. These odd notions of need, adoration of concrete amid beautiful leaves, trash, 
valued for its weight. The commodity of grief, wrapped in expectations, it will take forever to peel. Three, this treat with a very common taste. The gravedigger still smoked nearby. The shoveled sound of dirt on wood fills the glen with a burst of tears. Here again, years later, the gravediggers still smoke nearby. Last time, there were clouds like eyebrows. Now it's a breeze like a woman's cry. All the fears of a place like this wrapped in a child's hand around a rusted spade. Rabbis give good words to the day, but they don't remain in the air for long. Less like birds and more like feathers, promise changes to daily matters. These kids, without their father, bowed heads seeking home. Conjecture in Indian summer. The way we always fall for autumn's clean seduction, cheated into it in the heat of a malingering summer hour, yearning for coolness and ease, the grace of bird feather wiles. Suddenly, everything has changed and you're standing there alone, looking into trees or down a street, watching students jogging in the park, the way these young girls move, fluent as leaves in the language of air, non-committal as the same daydream languidly terrorizing your packaged noon. You may sit on a bench and cross your legs at the knee and pretend to read, yet somewhere in the moist hills you know the truth. When your breath is stolen by your own heartbeat lies, but you still won't dance for the cleansing native rain, kneaded like blood. Epiphany from behind. On a path through a forest, around a blue lake, a girl takes her youth and beauty on a stroll, in shorts, in June, incredible to behold. The center of a sudden universe awakens. For the briefest instant of eternity, true clarity, every aspect of nature as evident as breeze. The tide and the trees, the leaves and the reeds, all point to that place that keeps moving away. The dead doll. A grim patch along this random path, posed by fate perhaps among reeds and dry leaves, rocks and brown grass, dropped or thrown in some gray past from the quick fingertips of impatient youth. A smooth cataclysm occurring long ago, dated by the shroud of dirt caked on the cherubic cheek and lips, chin and ear, the vines and weeds of time hug these stunning remains to an obscure grave. The arm twisted out of place into a helpless hold by an invisible force to the morbid earth. Pinioned face down, the guileless mouth tightly shut, even in a doll's droll death, not speaking the haunting secret clearly bound in this mirage of fetal stone. No struggle in the fixed eyes, glazed open from the barrage of years, locked in an afterlife gaze on a changeless moment. A mixed blessing of surrender to the quiet and natural violence 
of lost innocence, a bland study of the meaning of everything suddenly dressing the mud at our feet, the catastrophe and glory of life, our brief crowns and fawning rites, raw failings and burning lies, all sung in the hymn of an old toy left behind on the primordial altar, deaf to all of our noise. Only the blare of silence answers our curious stare. Scythe. Thirty years it hung in the garage, unswung, sharp as it was the day they bought the house. After they died, I covered the blade and threw it out, an item in the pile of their grim stuff at the curb, reaped overnight by someone driving by who needed a symbol or a scythe. Carpe dustpan. One day we suddenly find our hopes and dreams swept away by a worn broom leaning on a green carpeted porch up the front steps off a wet street. Leading here from the fertile moment of youth to this blue hour of fearful peace. Our best mark so far left with a stick in cement years ago at the base of fences that needed climbing then. The rage of hormones through a narrow tube do nothing to water the garden we have grown into. The spectacular premise of seizing the day, once a grand prize, not such a good idea at this time. You can actually hear a clock ticking on a sore wrist. Yes, your house, your car, your job, your many daily reflections, your foregone medicines. Yet the compulsion exists to somehow push your way back in. Just take the dustpan and eat all your loss. Sometime after the TV clicks off in your hungry sleep. Song at Summer's End. As long as there is time to pray for innocence again, between raindrops and school bus stops, beneath the moody canopy of trees, a melody of the sun with a new backpack, straps tuned over broader shoulders now, inside a sack of dreams rainbowed by knuckled tears proudly cried, and of course fears endless and wide. As long as there is room for a faint mezuzah of mind and solitude enough for a fingertip kiss no one sees. The scroll of memories, feeded by beating hearts toasted with a vast wish, becomes the rolled and ribboned diploma of life. Faces turned down at the return to routines, the rising, the rushing, the sacramental scheduling of ages, the ritual of change. It is to be scavenged to each corner of the kitchen of time how our children's teeth grow and eyes become focused on their own. Placed on each hurried breakfast plate, the subliminal meal to sustain before that morning door slams and the deepening voice calls to other ears in a distance nothing but such love could bridge.